Hello everybody, it's Stuart A. Swordlow and Janet Diane Moya Swordlow for Expansions.com and this is our news podcast for the very last week in October 2012. And of course, the <laughs> maybe the only news that, that's been going on is the uh, Frankenstorm that's uh, happening just outside our windows and walls right now. And it's very unusual for an uh, Atlantic hurricane to be felt in the Great Lakes area. It's almost unheard of. Sometimes you might get residual um, showers from it uh, if the wind is a certain way, but certainly we've been having very heavy winds. Uh, temperatures are dropping, and I just saw on the um, weather forecast for snow and sleet today here in um, western Michigan. Um, and of course on the Great Lakes, Lake Michigan, is the very high waves. People are in Chicago are being told to stay away from the coastline. In New York, in Washington, Boston, the entire East Coast, there are no airplanes flying, no trains. The subways were closed or shut down even before the storm hit, which is a little bit unusual. It's like they wanted to create havoc before there was any havoc. Um, I'll tell you what, I know a lot of people on the East Coast and Everyone's emailing me and texting me. Uh, most of them still have electricity, even though we're getting reports of 10 million people with outages. At least 16 people dead in the U.S. and one in Canada so far. Uh, supposed, uh, supposed to be a lot of floods um, in uh, New Jersey, uh, New York City, and other parts of the uh, Northeastern Corridor. Um, and I will tell you something, the storm, at least to me, I know how you felt about it, it felt strange, it felt artificial, very unnatural. It behaved in an unnatural way. It drove up the East Coast, completely outlining the coastline of the Atlantic seaboard as if someone was driving it. And then suddenly, as it got to New Jersey, it made a sharp left-hand turn as if someone turned the steering wheel to the left, and then it went into the uh, coast of southern New Jersey. So, seems very mm -hmm. odd to me. and. Also, even before the storm manifested the way it did, they were already broadcasting about the dollar amount of damages, over a hundred billion dollars worth of damage, uh, supposed to be the worst storm to ever strike uh, the United States or even North America. So how would they know where it was going to exactly go? They can't tell the weather one day to the next. How could they tell where this storm was going to go? How did they know how strong the winds would be? How did they know where the snow was going to fall? How did they know what the damage was going to be before it even formed? Well, one thing that's always interesting whenever they have these kind of storms of any kind I noticed on the East Coast from living there for a number of years, that the first thing everybody does is run out and buy supplies. So it's very good for the economy whenever they have a storm because everybody well, fills up their gas tanks, they fill up their, you know, their pantries, their cupboards, they go buy all the supplies that they might possibly need and they hunker down for a few days. So. Well, and the thing is, schools are closed in New York City until Thursday, which is extremely unusual. Um, people are writing into me, emailing me, and texting me from uh, the East Coast saying they're perfectly fine, their electricity is on, there's no flood, there's no damage, there's a few branches in the street, that's about it. Um, no one person wrote in the garbage pail, didn't yeah, even move. Uh, actually, my, my oldest son wrote in, in his house, uh, the garbage pail outside didn't even move in the wind. So he said he doesn't know what the big mm -hmm. deal is all about and he's in Long Island. So which is where the worst was supposed to be. So I think again even though the media yesterday said if you think this is hyped it isn't this is more serious than you can imagine. Well sorry it was hyped mm -hmm. and it was also overblown literally. Um, yes people did die. Yes there's damage. Was it the way they said it was? I don't think so. We've experienced worse things here. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, and so uh, the other interesting thing or aspect about it is tens of thousands of people are stranded all over the world because most airlines canceled their flights in and out of the east coast of the U.S. So it not only affected domestic flights in North America but also international flights globally. Now here's the difference. In Europe, the European airlines are putting up their passengers and hotels and feeding them and taking care of them. In the United States, they're told it's an act of God, it's a weather act, and there's nothing they can do, you're on your own. 
Well, you know, That's the difference. Yeah. And besides that, you know, the other thing is how do we know that those pictures, uh, those radar pictures they're showing us are even real? I mean, they might not even be real. You know, everything could be totally manufactured except for a little bit here and there. We don't really know that. We have to trust that process. You know, I had also reported on, you might remember, the, the first eye that was found on the beach where they had the hands holding it. And then I had reported on the elephant eye last week, and I said there's going to be a third eye. Well, now they're talking about, of course, the eye of this storm. And ah, this yes. eye mm -hmm. is 28 mile wide, according to Air Force Recon. So this 2 plus 8, it's a 1. That's also a ritualistic number. And here we are basically on the eve of Halloween, which we know mm -hmm. is ritualistic. Yes. So there's a lot of things that are going on in here. And again, why did they close the schools still until Thursday? Mm -hmm. And plus, Election Day is coming up, mm -hmm. and the news said that there will be places where there will not be electricity until after the election is over. So how will people get out and vote? Yeah. So there are lots of things that are going on that we don't know how much is real and how much, unfortunately, is artificially created for us. But isn't it interesting, this is now two or three years in a row, in the same week, almost on the same day, that a huge storm hits the East Coast, right before Halloween. Last year was a big snowstorm, this year it's a hurricane. Every year there's something else. So something's going on with the Halloween triggering, and we all need to be aware of that and stay with the uh, violet protection and the brown merger at all times. Well, I hope you're reading my holiday blog that I have on the home page, which is my free holiday gift to you. Because in this holiday blog, we're talking about a lot of these things in detail, more detail than we normally do on the public side. And not as much detail as the member side, but enough to give you a better idea of the, of the whole picture of what's going on out there. Yeah. Um, and so that's what's going on uh, with the storm. It's still not over. We are under a high wind warning until tonight. Which is unusual um, for us being so far from the coast, yes, obviously. They said it's very unusual for the Great Lakes area to be affected in this intensity by an Atlantic hurricane. And they say tomorrow yeah. even stronger winds between 50 60 miles an hour. Really? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Are you sure about that? Because yeah. I just saw it, didn't say that. That's what I read on the, I heard on the radio this morning. That today mm. we set up to maybe 35, maybe. Because it's been more than 35. Yeah, already. but that's what they're saying. 35 gusts up to 50 for today. Tomorrow they're and that's saying. That's miles per hour, not kilometers. Yeah. And then per hour. tomorrow it's they're. So up to 100 kilometers per hour. Yeah, and tomorrow they're saying 50 to 60, which is unusual that it will be even more. Oh, I, I don't believe it. That's what they're I, saying. I don't think that's true. Um, in other news, in other news, um, I reported earlier in the week about the uh, secret Israeli airstrike on Sudan to destroy their weapons munitions factory outside of Khartoum. Well, uh, yesterday, Iran uh, docked a number of its uh, Navy ships in Sudan as a show of support for that country. And of course, um, uh, that's going to create more of, a, of an inflammatory issue between the Israelis and the Iranians. And the whole thing um, in, uh, in the Middle East, Central Asia, North Africa, the whole thing is coming to a head very soon. Uh, so keep your eye on that area. But um, I want to read uh, some, maybe some of you have seen this already. It's a book called In the President's Secret Service by Ronald Kessler, who was a Secret Service agent and is now uh, writing um, the information about what the Secret Service thought about the various presidents and the first ladies. And some of it's interesting and some of it is a bit surprising. Um, you know, for example, uh, what they talked about uh, President Kennedy and Jacqueline, your cousin Jackie. Bouvier, which yeah. is in my family lineage, by um, the way. It said that he was a philanderer of the highest order and that she ordered the kitchen help to save all the leftover wine during a state dinner, mix it with fresh wine, and served it again during... <laughs> Well, then who knows if this is true? Why would you do that? Well, seriously. right, seriously. So save, that's why I said the old wine. First of all, who leaves wine? You drink it. You don't mix it. With she's other probably, wine. Maybe they're that's, talking about what's in the bottles, what's left well, in the bottles. Well, but I, I mean, think, again, you know, the budget but then is again, not a. I guess your ancestry was like that. Uh, no, you know? my ancestry wasn't like that. Now, about Lyndon and Lady Bird Johnson, they called him another philanderer of the highest order, and that he was crude. He was as crude as the day is long and that both JFK and LBJ kept a lot of women in the White House for extramarital affairs, and both had set up early warning systems to alert them if and when their wives were nearby. 
Both Kennedy and Johnson were promiscuous and oversexed men. She was either naive or just pretended to not know about her husband's many liaisons. You know, of that level, they have, it's like the Prince Harry thing. They, they're always sleeping with everybody. It doesn't well, make Well, I difference. had heard that about uh, both of them, but, but here's one that really mm -hmm. I was surprised at Richard Nixon and, and Patricia Nixon. They called him a moral man, but very odd, weird, and paranoid. He had horrible relationship with his family in a way, was a recluse, and she was quiet most of the time. I don't know. I don't think he was a very moral man. They also said Spiro Agnew was nice and decent. Again, I'm not so sure about that one. Well, there's a reason why this book is out. Mm -hmm. I always remember Wait, that. Wait, it gets better. Gerald and Betty Ford, he is a true gentleman who treated the Secret Service with respect and dignity. She drank a lot. Well, That's why the Betty Ford Clinic, obviously. Obviously, if he was that great, she wouldn't have been drinking that much. So, so something's odd with that story. Uh, J oh, now this is one I like. Jimmy and Rosalind Carter. He, a complete phony who would portray one picture of himself to the public and very different in private. For example, they would show him carrying his own luggage, but the suitcases were always empty. Uh, he kept the empty ones just for photo ops. Uh, he wanted to, uh, people to see him as pious and a non-drinker, but he and his family drank alcohol a lot. Mm. <laughs> and she mostly did her own thing and say very much about her. Now, Ronald and Nancy Reagan, they said they were the real deal, moral, honest, respectful, dignified. They treated Secret Service and everyone with respect. Um, so I'm not, not surprised to hear about that. Well, no, none of it's true. I think, I think the whole book is malarkey. And she was very nice, but very protective of the president. And the Secret Service was often caught in the middle. She would always tell him what to say. They never drank alcohol except for uh, wine during state dinners. Um, and now, now this one, this one really shot me. George and Barbara Bush, right? They called him extremely kind and considerate. So what does that tell you about the book? Always respectful. She ruled the house and spoke her mind. Well, that's not a surprise, but come on, people. Extremely kind and considerate. He ate children. Now, this is the other one. Bill and Hillary Clinton. Now, okay, they're getting more honest here. He, the presidency, was one giant party. He was not trustworthy. He was nice mainly because he wanted everyone to like him. But to him, life is just one big game and party, and everyone knows of his sexuality. She, another phony. Her personality would change the instant cameras were near. She hated with open disdain the military and secret service. She was another one who felt people were there to serve her, and she was always trying to keep tabs on Bill Clinton. Now, the next one I love the most, Albert Gore. Al Gore, remember Al Gore, global warming? An egotistical ass who was once overheard by a secret service detail lecturing his only son that he needed to do better in school or he wound up like these guys pointing to the agents. Very brilliant. George and Laura Bush. Again, this one's hard to believe. I think they're they pay. I think funny. they paid to have this book written. They're, of course, they did. Because they're it all, says, all made up. The Secret Service loved him and Laura Bush. He was also the most physically in shape. Uh, the Bushes made their entire administration, administrative and household staff understood they were to respect and consider of the Secret Service. She was one of the nicest first ladies, if not the nicest. She was the most drugged. I was just going to say, she never had a harsh word to say about anyone because she didn't know who, or who they were or could see them. She was always on drugs and drinking. And this I know from, from uh, people who knew her personally. Uh, now, we have to talk about Barack and Michelle Obama because... This is from Secret Service. Supposedly. He, Clinton all over again, hates the military and looks down on the Secret Service. He is egotistical and cunning, looks you in the eye and appears to agree with you, but turns around and does the opposite. He's untrustworthy and has temper tantrums. I cannot relate to that whatsoever. Now she, now I'm just quoting what they're saying here, Michelle Obama. She is a complete bitch who basically hates anybody who is not black, hates the military, and looks at the Secret Service as servants. And this is a quote from the Secret Service. A taxpayer voting for Obama is like a chicken voting for Colonel Sanders. <clears throat> what more can you possibly say?